message is, why are you following hard after the Lord? Why are you following hard after the Lord? Amen. So we want to kind of look on that topic. Okay. And we find out why most people follow the Lord. This is the reason why most people follow hard after the Lord. And we're going to look at those areas. Eight, for physical and temporal benefits. For what physical that he can do for them or the temporal benefits. Uh, it's a benefit in serving God. Amen. So they, they are serving him because of physical or temporal benefits that he makes available or can make available for their life. B, to gain prestige, achievement, or success. I've had people come to me, I need you to pray for me because I'm trying to get a job. That's achievement. I, I need this job. I want you to pray for me that I can be successful in, in, in this school, uh, whatever. But they are not intended to follow him for who he is, but just for what they can get. I need success. I need achievement. And, you know, sometimes one, if you're following him for those reasons, why don't you just receive him, accept him, and that will stay with you for all the time. Amen. But to gain prestige, I need some achievement. I'm trying to pass a test. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do that. And I need to be successful in my, in my schoolwork or whatever. C, comfort for consolation after the death of a loved one. People come to me. I need you to pray for me. My mother, my sister, my brother, my cousin pass away. And they are just for consolation, for, to be consoled. Amen. After the death of a loved one to be receivable, to relief through affliction they're going through. I'm just going through so much. I just don't know what to do because of some kind of affliction in their life. Then they're looking for the Lord just for that temporal thing. Amen. Not permanent, but temporal. So I need right now because I'm going through affliction, I need the Lord to help me in this matter. Or freedom from pain. I, I, I have hurt. My, my chest is hurting. My leg is hurting. My back is hurting. I need you to pray for that. Uh, just because of anxiety, which actually comes from stress, uh, things that bring anxiety within their lives. So they're seeking the Lord to get freedom from pain or anxiety or to receive comfort after, uh, after the death of a loved one. Amen. D, to get votes. I've had people come to me. I'm, I'm, one of, I'm running for Congress. I'm running for uh, a mayor. I'm running for uh, whatever. And I need, I need for you. Uh, you know, to pray for me that I can, I can win, whatever. So they come into the saints, asking the saints to pray that we can pray to our God that they can get the votes they need to get in a position. Amen. Or to get good grades in school or to pass a test, as we talked about even earlier, to get good grades or even to pass a test. So we look at those areas. That Those are areas that many people are seeking the Lord for all they're seeking for is just a temporal Benefit, a physical, a temporal benefit. So how they can be beneficial in your prayer or for the Lord to be beneficial for their life just for that moment. Amen. Okay. The next factor, why we should follow the Lord. Now, these are the reasons why we as Christians should stay continually following him. A, his way is the only way to live. It's a lifestyle. I want to live your way, Lord. I want to adapt the lifestyle to live the way uh, uh, that you lived, to do the things that you did. So because if I can uh, live the way and adjust my life to live a life uh, the way that you want me to live, then I can be assured of everlasting life. So his way is the only way to live. When I've accepted Christ in my life, he showed me how I can live, how I can how I can love one another, how I can be friendly, how I can accept ridicule, how I can accept criticism, how all this, in other words, it's a new way of life. Amen. So his way is the only way to live. Amen. And be successful and to be blessed. B, why? Because we truly love him. We love him. I follow him because I love him. Because when I realize all he did for me, when I realized he took the cross because of me, when I realized he died because of me, when I realized he gave it all up so that we can have it. He said, the things I did, greater things can you do because I go back to the Father. The Lord let us know that when we accept him, it's because we truly love him. Don't accept him 
because you like him. No, I love him. That means I'll be willing to, uh, uh, you know, he gave his life that we can have life because no greater love than this. We got to have love, ye not only for him, but we also got to have love for one another. Amen. The, the Lord left that with his disciples in the 13th chapter of the book of St. John. He said, in one new commandment I leave with thee. Love ye one another as I have loved you. Amen. We truly love him. See, he changed our life. The life that I was living prior to his coming into my life, he changed my life. Gave me something to live for. He changed my, my, my love. He changed my joy. He changed my faith. He changed everything concerning me. You know, I feel better by myself. I can feel better toward other people. I can even accept criticism now that I used to be able to not accept. I, I, can, I can accept people coming down on me, you know, and putting me to really make me feel bad about things, you know, to try to come down on you. I can accept it now. He changed me. And it's not because I'm saying what he did for you and what he maybe hadn't done for you, but I know what he did for me. He changed me. Amen. Gave me a heart of love where there used to be a heart of hate. Made me start loving where I used to despise. He gave me something to live for. Amen. He changed my life. D. He promised eternal life to all who accepts him. He gave me something to look forward to. He promised me everlasting and eternal life. Amen. If I accept, if I accept in my life, he promised me that he's going to give me everlasting life. What greater joy can you say? You know, because we think sometimes we're on this side. This is the only side. No, there's another side. This is just, we're just down here preparing ourselves for what we're going to spend eternity. Are we going to spend eternity with Jesus? Have everlasting life? Amen. In that new Jerusalem that's going to come down from heaven at dawn as a bride, or we're going to spend eternity, as Jesus says in the 20th chapter, verse number 15, death and hell should be cast into the lake of fire. Are we going to be spending eternity in the lake of fire? Are we going to spend eternity with the Lord in that new Jerusalem that's going to come down at dawn as a bride? Amen. So we got to realize he promised us eternal life. Eternal life with him for all those who accept him. Amen. And I think we had an E. Did we have an E? He's our way maker. He's our heart fixer. He's our mind regulator. He's our burden bearer. These are just a few things. Just mediocre from what he, he is. He, he make a way when there is no way. That's why he's a way maker. How many times have we made a way in our lives where we didn't know what he was going to do? We didn't know how he was going to fix it, but he did. Why? Because he's a way maker. He's a heart fixer. He'll fix your heart. See, he's a, he's a cardiologist. He can change your heart. He take the heart of stone, he make it a heart of flesh. He's a heart fixer. He changed my heart. He gave me love. I didn't used to have this. He gave me joy when I didn't used to have this. The things what he gave me, he fixed my heart. See, when you, a person's heart is what the Lord looks at. Looks at the heart of man. If you love him, you got to have your heart changed. You got to have, you got to make sure you have visited him as a cardiologist. I'm not talking about down here. You get cardiologists down here, sometimes I don't know what they're doing. They'll put you through a chest test and all that and tell you, well, okay, well, you look okay to me. I don't see nothing wrong with your heart. You go right back and could be gone. But I'm talking about he that can change your heart to bless you. He's a heart. Fixer. He's a mind regulator. See, Satan, the, the idle mind is the devil's workshop. So the Lord says, I'm a mind regulator. I regulate your mind. Won't be idle. Hey, won't be idle no more. You can get your mind stayed on me, and I keep you in perfect peace. See, I keep my mind stayed on him. Lord, my mind is steady on you. Oh, but when I'm going through a crisis, my mind is on you. When I'm going through a heartache, my mind is on you. When I'm going, going through a situation, I don't know how I'm going to get out of it. My mind is stayed on you all the time. When I'm in my bed sleep and maybe a pain trying to wrap my body, I say, Lord, but my mind is on you. He's a mind regulator. He's a burden bearer. He said, give me all your words, all your cares. 
Give me all your burdens because I care for you. The Lord wants your burdens. He wants your problems. See, some people say, well, Pastor, I need you to pray. I'm going to. No, have you gone to the Lord about this thing? He's a burden bearer. He said, give me all your worries. You can go to him in vision. You ain't gonna, sometimes you can't reach me. Sometimes I might be on another area. But you know the Lord is always available. Because believe it or not, when you come to me, I got to go to him. I can't do nothing without him. But all things are possible for those that believe it. He's a burden bearer. Oh, hallelujah. So what is your reason? Why are you following hard after him? Okay, let's go to the book of St. John, the sixth chapter. We're going to skip quite a bit. We can go to verse number 25. Prior to that, the Lord turned the two fish five loaves of bread to feed thousands. Amen. Uh, not including women and children, just to be, you know, he, he, he fed more than 5,000 people. Amen. All the men that were obedient, he fed them. But he fed all those that was around and all those that, that believed him, all those that, those that were obedient to him, those men that refused to, 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 to be seated, they didn't get fed. That's why he told the disciples, command the men, command the men to be seated. Any man that wasn't obedient didn't get fed. But he fed all those that was around, the men and women and children that were obedient. Amen. When we're obedient to him, he's going to bless you. When you're disobedient, you can look for some bad things to come your way. But he fed people with two fish and five loaves of bread. Then after, right after then, then after he did, they want to make him a captain and, and, uh, uh, over them, and the Lord is, escaped from them. He left them. And then they wound up getting on the ship looking for where he was, and, and, and Jesus came walking the waters. And they knew it was him because he introduced him. He said, it is I. He let them know. See, the Lord let them see not only a miracle that was done for their life, but a miracle that he was before them. He showed them things that he can do. He can use objects to bless. And then he showed that if I want to show you who I am, the power and the authority that I have in my father, that I can walk this water. When they knew the natural man couldn't walk the water, he'd immediately be sinking. Amen. But he walked the water. Amen. He done all that for a reason. The Lord do miracles for a reason. So that we can believe on him. He, he, you know, he, he permitted a miracle. You are a miracle. You wasn't always serving God. You wasn't always in the house of the Lord. You wasn't always trying to do the right thing. No. He changed every one of us. If you were here today, the Lord came in your life. Some way or another. He, he, it, 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 you know, the way that he introduced himself to you may not be the same way he introduced himself, introduced himself to me. He induced himself to me when we was going through a crisis with some of my brothers. Amen. Well, actually, one of my brothers. That my brother was going through some situation in his life, and, and the Lord came and introduced himself to the whole family. You may have seen it another way. He may have come you another direction. You may have experienced death of a loved one, and the Lord just prior to that show you the life that they lived. Uh, maybe turn your life around while you was on the verge of getting killed or uh, maybe going through a crisis or an accident or something. But somewhere or another that you know what he did. And what he did for you wasn't because of you being lucky. It was because you were blessed. Because nobody but nobody but nobody was able to take you through that but him. And you know it was him. Hold on to that. Don't try to sit back and say, well, you know, I don't know what he did for me. You know, if you are here, you, you've been blessed. You didn't wake yourself up this morning. He woke you up. You could have been dead in your sleep. You could have been on a respirator. You could have been a fatality. You could have been in the graveyard today. Every breath you take is because of him. Every heartbeat is because of him. Every heartbeat is because of him. Every breath I take is because of him. Every step that I can make is because of him. Every movement in my hands is because of him. Every time that I can just be in the land of the living, it's because of him. And we got to thank him for who he is. Stop ignoring the blessings of God. Waking up in the morning looking for your breakfast and looking for your coffee instead of getting on your knees and saying, Lord, I want to thank you. 
woke me up this morning, clothed me in my right mind, gave me in the activities of my limbs. Thank you, Lord. Preserving my family, Lord, taking care of my mama, taking care of my sisters, my brothers, my sons, my daughters, whomever. He did it. You couldn't do it. You were asleep. While you were sleeping at night, he sent angels charge to keep you in all thy ways. Guarding angels, guarding over you, watching over you to make sure no danger, no harm come against you. To make sure that when the devil try to come and attack you, Satan get behind thee. Oh, but hallelujah, the Lord is good. Sixth chapter, verse 25. Let's go to verse 25. And when they found him on the other side of the lake, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come over here? How you, when did you get here? Next verse, 26. Jesus answered them, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, you have been searching for me not because you saw the miracles and the signs, but because you were fed with the loaves and were filled and satisfied. You came in just because your belly was full. You come in to feed your belly again. You know, one thing about it, you know, when you eat a lot, sometimes you want to eat something else and you just got through eating it. Yeah, ain't happening to none of y'all, have you? You just got through eating a good meal. Man, I'm so full. Somebody bring something up before you. I think I'll take a little piece of that. I know y'all don't do that. Some folks out there do that. They, they, they know they just got to eat a big meal, and they're walking around, they're, they're rubbing their belly because they're so full. But then somebody puts something good before them. I think I, I can't get a piece of that. I know y'all don't do that. Some folks do. Some folks out there, they do those kind of things. They still want something. Because <laughs> the word of God said there's no good thing in this flesh. Amen. Amen. That's no good. This old flesh won't stop. It just wants you to blow yourself up. It want to clog up your arteries. It want to give you high potential. It want to give you diabetes. It want to mess you up. Because Satan is the instigator of all evil work. Satan will try to come to you and make you want. You know it's not good for you. But your body craving for, oh, I know it ain't good, but I might just a little piece. I don't think it's going to hurt. I know y'all don't do that. Just a little bit of piece of that. Just, just a little bit. I, and then you tell him, the doctor told me I'm supposed to eat that, but I don't think you know what he's talking about. Just give me just a little bit of peace, not very much. Then when you get through eating, oh man, I shouldn't have hate that. That don't happen to y'all. That's other folks that have those kind of problems. Amen. Okay. <laughs> You were fed with the loaves and were filled and satisfied. Verse 27. Stop toiling and doing the, and producing for the food that perishes and decomposes and, and the using. In other words, stop working so hard for stuff that is here now and it's going to be gone. But strive and work and produce rather for the lasting food which endures continually until seek for that which is going to give you eternal life. Don't look for stuff that's here now and you're going to continue laboring for it and, and, and it's going to decompose itself. It's going to be totally gone away, whatever. But don't worry about that. Look for food that you can eat that and guarantees you everlasting life. Amen. The Son of Man will give you, will punish you that. For God the Father has authorized and certified him and put his seal of endorsement upon you. He's been endorsed from the Father. He has a seal of approval from his Father that what he gives you is sealed and it's been approved. It's been tested. It passed the test. It passed the test of time that it guarantees you everlasting life. That's what you should labor for. See, I want something that's going to guarantee me everlasting life. I don't want something... That just eat right now, but then I got to go eat and continue on. It reminds me that much of that about, about that woman that was at the well. You remember that? The Lord said, this water that you drank it, you're going to thirst again. But the water that I can give you is everlasting. It's going to be springing up into waters continually like springs. It's tell, every time you kind of get low, it comes back and feeds you back up again. He said, labor for that, which the Father has approved that's been certified 
and seal, has a seal of endorsement upon him. Amen. Verse 28. Then they said, they then said, what are we to do that we may habitually be working the works of God? What are we to do to carry out what God requires? What can we do to carry on what God requires? What can we do to habitually be working for God? Amen. That we can habitually be doing the works of God. Amen. Verse 29, Jesus replied, this is the works of the service that God asks of you, that you will believe in the one whom he has sent. This is how you can receive everything God has for you. Believe and accept the one that he has sent. Trust in him. Cleave to him. Rely on him. Have faith in his message in him. His messenger. See, we got to have faith in the word. We got to know if the Lord said it, it's been certified, it's been approved, it's been sealed, and it's been endorsed from heaven. If the Lord said, with his stripes, you're going to be healed. You got to believe that. It's certified. It's been approved. It's been tested. It proved the test of time, and it's guaranteed. If he said that, what sort of things you ask in prayer, believe me, you're going to receive it. You got to know you got it. Because you stand on that word, God is not man that he shall lie, nor the son of man he shall repent. For all his promises is yes and amen. We got to know it. I don't care what the doctor says. Doctor said, you got to do this and got to have that to continue on life. No, no, his people taking medication all the time and still leaving. But if the Lord promised you that everything is going to be all right, I'm, I stand on his scriptures. That's why I say, Lord, I stand on your word. Your word said, your word said, surely you have borne my griefs and carried my sorrows. You were smitten and stricken by God and afflicted. But you was wounded for my transgression, which for my iniquity, the chastisement of my peace was upon you, in which your stripes I'm healed. Amen. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. Read it. Verse 30. Therefore, they said unto him, what sign, what miracle, what wonder work will you perform then so that we may see it and believe and rely on and heed to you? What supernatural work have you to show what you can do? Now, look at this. They already saw the things that he was able to do. He done right before them. He turned two fish, five loaves, and fed thousands. He walked the water. He's been doing all of this. But yet still, what sign can you show us? What can you perform that we can see it and believe and rely on it and heed to you? What you talking about? And what supernatural work have you to show what you can do? We want to see some supernatural work. No, they love to see stuff, but they don't believe in it. Have you seen a miracle and you don't believe in it? We see miracles every day. I see a miracle every time we wake up in the morning. It's a miracle. You back talking about, I ain't never seen no miracle. Well, I went to the Lord, show me a miracle. Well, baby, believe me. When you wake up in the morning, you can't open your mouth. You can't move your body. You will know what a miracle is then. You'll thank the Lord for when you can't move it. Thank you, Lord. I seen people didn't believe in God. But all of a sudden, the situation happened. The Lord will make you out of believer. Let me tell you something. If you are healed, you're coming to him. If you are healed, you're coming. It just depends on what's going to have to happen for you to believe. But if you are healed, if the, he said, all the Father has given me, I'm not going to lose any. So let me tell you, baby, if you are healed, if you have already been placed into the book of life, and the Lord already knows that you're going to be healed anyway, he said, when the, if I be lifted up, I will draw men unto me. All the Father has given me, I'm not going to lose any. That's why that was his greatest victory on that cross. When Jesus was lifted up, he said, but if I be lifted up, now you can nail me to the cross. You can nail my feet. You can nail my hands. But if I be lifted up, I'm going to draw men. In other words, you lift his name up. He's going to draw folks to your life. He's going to draw folks around you. Don't be ashamed of him. He said, you'll shame me before men. I'll be ashamed of you before my father, which is in heaven. Stop being ashamed of him. It's so many folks need to know about him. So many folks that are committing suicide daily and day in and day out. So many folks giving up on life. Some of your own family members. 
and you're talking about you got something that they really need. You got Jesus, and you refuse to share him with them. The Lord's going to hold you accountable. He give you stuff for you to release, release out. And the more you give, the more he give back to you. See, when you give out Jesus to somebody, he giving more Jesus to you for you to give out more of him to the world. Amen. What supernatural work have you to show from what you can do? Go to verse 31. Our forefathers ate the man in the wilderness, as the scripture says. He gave them bread out of heaven to eat. Go to verse 32. Jesus then said to them, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven. What Moses gave you was not the bread from heaven. But it is my father who gives you the true heavenly bread. Moses gave you only what he had, temporal stuff. But my father is the one that can give you from heaven the true heavenly bread. So let me tell you, you ain't, you ain't even see nothing until you receive the heavenly bread. You can receive the Lord in your life. You got the true bread that you can guarantee you'll never get hungry. You'll never get thirsty. I can guarantee you, you'll stay joyful even when everybody else is sad. The joy of the Lord is your strength. I guarantee you, when you get the true heavenly bread, you'll never feel like you're left alone. You'll never feel lonesome. You'll never feel sorry. You'll never feel sick. Not like that. Spiritually. Some folks are spiritually sick. Amen. Go to verse 33. For the bread of God is he who comes down out of heaven and gives life to the world. This is the bread of God. He who comes down out of heaven. They're talking about Jesus. And gives life to the world. That's the bread of God. Do you have the bread of God? Tell somebody, I got the bread of God. Because I got Jesus. Okay, verse 34. Then they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always, all the time. We want it now. And we want it all the time. Go to verse 35. Jesus replied, I am the bread of life. You want me? I am the bread I'm talking about. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never be hungry. He who believes and cleaves to and trusts in and relies on me will never thirst anymore at any time. If you get me, you'll never get hungry. If you get me, you'll never get thirsty. You'll never be by yourself. You always feel like I'm full because I got Jesus in my life. And he's the word. And as long as I'm eating that word, I'm eating him. He is the true bread. Oh, hallelujah. He had to let them know I'm the bread of life. See, they're looking for some stuff he had, some magical stuff. Some stuff he may be carrying in a pouch. Some he had in a book. Huh? Some he had in, in a sachet, whatever. But Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Since you want that true bread that you're never hungry, I get hungry, I never get thirsty, I am the bread of life. He who take of me, amen, he will never be hungry, he will never be thirsty a- anymore, 36. But as I tell you, although you have seen me, still you do not believe and trust and have faith in me. Even though you see me, you still do not believe and trust in me. You saw me. So many of us have seen the work of the Lord in people's lives, in our own life, but we still don't believe in it. Somebody say, oh, I, I believe in it. I believe in it. Oh, you're saying because of my service? Oh, you're saying because you truly believe? Do you truly believe? Amen. That's why the Lord says, I've told you, although you have seen me and still do not believe and trust and have faith in me. Go to verse 37. All whom my father gives and trusts to me will come to me. And the one who comes to me, I will most certainly not cast out. If you come to me, I'm not going to cast you out. I'm going to receive you. I will never, no, never reject one who comes to me. I will never reject you. If you come to me, I'm not going to reject you. I'm going to accept you. As, you know, the Lord accepted us as we were. I came in as a drug, dealing with drugs, dealing with alcohol. 
chasing women, doing all that kind of stuff. And one day I said, Lord, I'm tired of this. I need to change my life. I came to him dirty. See, the Lord wants you to come to him dirty because he don't want to clean you up. See, he wants you to come like you are. Some folks say, I don't go to church because I'm still smoking. I don't go to church because I'm still drinking. I'm going, I, don't, I don't go to church because I'm still dealing with drugs and I still got a drug problem. And that's why I don't go to church. I don't want, I don't want to be around them folks because they're all church Christians. Let me tell you, baby, every one of us, every one of us came dirty. Every one of us came unclean. Every one of us came messed up. But let me tell you about somebody that will clean you up. Somebody that will take you as you are and make something out of you. I came him as I was. Sick, messed up, bunch of mess of junk. That's all I was. Messing up my life, messing up everybody else's life around me. But one day, I said, you know, this needs to change. I need to stop living like this. I need to stop doing these things. I need to stop messing with this drug. I need to stop messing with this alcohol. I need to stop messing around being a male prostitute. I need to change it. I don't care what clinics I went to. I don't care what kind of sinners I went to. Rehabilitation centers I ain't did it. One day I said, Jesus, hear my Lord. If you can change this, I give it all to you, Lord. I'm all messed up. I can't get rid of my drugs. I can't stop drinking. I can't stop smoking. But I heard that you can clean up a sinner. I heard that you can save a wretched wretch like me. I heard that you can fix me up. Heard that you can change my life. I heard that you guarantee everlasting life. I heard that you can heal my body. You can regulate my mind. I heard that you have all power. And Lord, if you can do anything for a sinner, here am I. The Lord cleaned me up, y'all. Clean me, he cleaned me and cleansed me. I wasn't always behind these pulpits. I wasn't always preaching. That just been a few years down the road. But one day Jesus saw me as I was. And I was ready to say, Lord, I need a change. I need to stop acting silly. That's all we're doing out there in the streets, acting silly, waiting on something bad to happen, waiting on somebody to take us out here, you know, stressed out in a casket to go to hell for eternity. Say, Lord, that's not me. I don't want to go to hell for nobody. Evie Hill said that a while back. He said three things I heard about hell. I heard it was hot. I heard it was one way in, no way out. And I heard it was everlasting. That's enough to get my attention, E.B. Hill said. Some of y'all know about E.B. Hill. One of the men that, great man of God. They live around Houston and California area. E.B. Hill, he been passed away. That was a, a, a crouch, crouch, that be on a TVN. That was his pastor. He always said, my pastor, E.B. Hill, great man of God. Black, black gentleman, amen, great man of God. It's great man of God that I've seen. Yeah, on television. Amen. There was great, great, great men that really stood firm in what they said. Tried to live the life that they said they was living. I don't follow everybody. I don't follow people. I, I want to know something about them. Because my soul is at stake. I, I don't follow anybody. I don't care what folks saying about them. I don't care how big they're on TV. I follow only those that follow after Christ. Because I, I got to watch this body. I got to keep this body holy and undefiled before him. Amen. He, I got to give an account. Amen. And all whom the Father gives me I will, will come to me. And the one who comes to me, I will most certainly not cast out. I will never leave. I will never reject one who comes to me. Verse 38. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will and purpose, but to do the will of and the purpose of him who sent me. I've been sent down to do a purpose of him that sent me. I didn't come down for my own thing. I didn't come down to satisfy me. I didn't come down to talk about my own self. I came down to talk about him that sent me. I've been sent down. Let me tell you, you've been sent from heaven. Every one of you. If you're here, you've been sent from heaven 
to go and spread the message out that Jesus lived. And you let yourself be the example. You ain't got to go, well, you know, he did this for Pastor Cobra, but Pastor Cobra, man, I knew him by him and all that. No, talk about your own self. My, my, my testimony is my own self. When I get the point, I ain't got to talk about what Joe Blow had happened to Joe Blow. I talk about me. What he did for me. How he changed me. If he changed me, he can change you. Verse 39. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall not lose any of all that he's given me. He ain't going to lose none of y'all. If you belong to him, you're coming in. It's just depending when you're going to come in or you're going to stay lazy and go through stuff instead of saying, you know what, I better come on in so he can fix it for me. While you're steady, you're steady being whipped and beat. The Lord allowed the evil one to whip you and chastise you to get you back in your place. Don't you know the Lord will allow the devil to make your life havoc and tear, torn up to get you back where you're supposed to be? Mom and daddy used to whip us when we get out of line. Didn't they whip you when you got out of line? Oh, yes. I was always getting me one. Wake up in the morning. Mama say, come on, boy, I got, got the strap for you. I know you're going to mess up again today. Amen. I was always getting in trouble. Some of y'all still getting in trouble. Wait, let me go and get away from there. Okay. But that I shall give new life and raise them all up at the last day. Amen. This is the will of him that sent me, that I shall not lose any of all that he's given me but that I should give new life and raise them all up at the last days. He can raise us all up at the last days. Last verse 30, I mean 40. For this is my Father's will and his purpose, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in, cleaves to, trusts in, relies on him, should have eternal life. And I will raise him up. Now look at this. I will raise him up from the dead at the last day. I'm going to raise you up from the dead. If you've accepted me, I'm going to raise you up. You ain't got to worry about being dead and going to hell. It's when he turns into the lake of fire. But I'm going to raise him up at the last days. And he's going to be with me forever. I don't know about you, but I'd rather have that than to have this other that's promised. Any name that's not found written in the book of life will be cast into the lake of fire. If your name is not in this book, you can get your name in this book today. I want everyone to stand. If there are somebody.